Hi, this is Laptop Radio. Today's show is Pirate Chain and the importance of privacy. And I am here with Crypto Witch. Hello. Yes. Hi, 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 Laptop Radio. Michelle from. Can I say Michelle? Yes. <laughs> okay, just checking. All right. Hi, Michelle. Thank you so much for inviting me. And just so everybody's clear, this is going to go out on Laptop Radio and it's also going to go out on my YouTube channel and my BitTubers channel. This is shared content by you. We and are I. collaborating, which is really the spirits of decentralization. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I'm really honored to have you. And I want to ask you, um, what is your story? What's my story? So this is with regards to Bitcoin, right? Not my life story. Correct. All right. So I used to be a child protection social worker. And in about 2013, I was just educating myself about money and everything, how it works. And I came across this thing called Bitcoin. And I didn't quite understand it. But me and my wife thought, okay, well, let's throw some money at it and see what happens. Did that. I bought my first Bitcoin off a bloke in a pub um, who I met through local Bitcoins because I had no idea what it was about. I wanted somebody to talk me through it. So um, I gave him cash. He gave me some Bitcoin, helped me set up a wallet. And then off I went. And uh, then a couple of years later, I had a look at the Bitcoin price and I was like, oh, <laughs> well, this is good. And then I, in 2016, I started researching it, learning more about it, learning more about it. And then towards the end of 2016, I diversified and I bought some other coins. Ethereum and Litecoin and Dash and Monero. And then April 2017, I started my channel on YouTube, which has now has about 17 and a half thousand subscribers. I still, I post pretty much every day. Um, although I've been being shadow banned since June 2018, no, June 2019 by YouTube. So my subscribers are actually going down and my views have gone way down. And so I'm posting on bittubers.com, which is a decentralized blockchain alternative censorship resistant alternative to youtube so yeah that's, that's awesome i mean it's kind of interesting how we're the centralized platforms are regulating us yeah. and regulating speech in a way right and content um and we need to move to more decentralized platform that are less censoring us or not censoring us yes 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 where we have more freedom and yes, and, and being incentivized for our content, which is really important. Yeah, that, that's it. Yeah, because people, if you watch my material on BitTubers, then you can earn TubeCoin just for watching it on BitTubers. Also, you can earn TubeCoin just for going on the internet using their airtime module to proof of work coin. And uh, they also do podcasting, Michelle, if you want to start oh. posting, your, posting your audios onto BitTubers and I'll have my I'll have my referral link in the description below to this video. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I might I might look into that because I'm certainly using very centralized um, platforms to host my podcast right now. And um, it's still not perfect, <laughs> I must say. Um, you know, but but I, I really love the idea of I think the, the blockchain world incentivizing our attention because there's a lot of big companies making a lot of money out of our content and our attention. And we really need to own that back, I feel. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and that's my story on how I got into Bitcoin and then my story about Pirate Chain. Yep. So I have for over a year now, maybe a year and a half been covering Komodo. Komodo projects and Pirate Chain is a project that is born out of the Komodo ecosystem. You know, it's a completely independent, separate project, independent blockchain, but many of the same developers. What is the uh, the ticker for Pirate Chain? Oh, yes, yes, yes. The ticker <laughs> for Pirate Chain is, is A Triple R, which is pronounced R. <laughs> I really, I love going on the uh, to the Telegram channel and just say that it's so. Uh -huh. awesome. <laughs> um, so the topic is about the importance of privacy um, mm -hmm. <laughs> for pirate chain, and um, you know, of course, if you're a pirate, you know, you you care about privacy. Um, why do you think privacy is really important today? Oh my God, why is it <laughs> really important today, right? Well, privacy is just important for freedom. 
it's it's like if if i am always compelled to be in the public space if i cannot withdraw myself from the public space i'm not free you know it's otherwise we we uh, we end up in a panopticon you know we're forever being watched and then we don't know who's watching us we don't know who has access to that information we don't know what they're going to do with it what they're going to do with it down the line so there's no there's no freedom without privacy and and and, and I, I did once explain to a friend is that there's a there's a connection between privacy and creativity mm -hmm. you and i aren't having a pri private conversation we are at the time of recording it but we know it's going to be public yeah but if we have a private space we can create whatever we want to create in 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 dialogue with each other and if what we're creating is in um contrary to whatever the dominant prevailing orthodoxy is we're not going to have that freedom to create you yeah. know it's like think about in nine before it became okay before homosexuality became legal in the uk in the uk right then yeah thank goodness there was privacy yeah because it meant that people who were gay they could they were they could be safe and secure yeah yeah privacy for freedom for safety for security let's let's talk about safety you know i i think the concept of safety is not spoken about in the tech world today you mm -hmm. know and when i when i think about safety you know of course i think about privacy and also think about being safe being safe emotionally, being safe at home, um, being safe when I, I go to work. Um, so there's just a certain amount of comfort, right? Um, and if my safety is violated in some way, and oftentimes when we don't know about it, um, or we feel like someone is watching us, we may not feel safe. It's like walking on eggshells. So with the surveillance movement, right, a lot of cameras watching us, um, where it's not safe to have conversations on the internet and share information and ideas on the internet. You know, what, and I just feel like that safety that we have might be compromised. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Yeah, and there's something else, Michelle, who's doing the watching? we don't get to watch those that rule over us they're not transparent with us we but don't somehow, know <laughs> you know what, I mean, what i mean is like for example the mps the people in congress the senators the royal family the politicians we don't we don't get to watch over them but the government gets to watch over us yes the government and the big companies right like facebook yeah. i don't know what they're doing with my information are they selling it to a bunch of other people i don't know who they are yeah, yeah i mean i don't know how much they're how much they're selling like you know like if i do a post how much is that worth yes it would be completely different if we were uh surveilling if we had the freedom to surveil mark zuckerberg yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, but he planted a bunch of trees around his house. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Is that interesting? I mean, he yeah. wanted privacy himself, but yet yeah, we're being watched and our information is being used. And not to mention that, you know, our data is being toggled, you know, when people buy ads, right? Yeah. You know? Yep. And then, and then sometimes I hear people say, you know, well, if you've gotten, if you've done nothing wrong, you've got nothing to hide. You've got nothing to fear about privacy. And I know, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you really, really don't think privacy is important, then please send me your email address and your password. Correct. <laughs> Let's read your stuff. <laughs> your bank account details as well, so I can access in your date of birth and all the other business I need so I can have a look. <laughs> and then I can make judgments about you and, and do some right, behavior whatever. analysis or with AI. With AI. <laughs> so this is why privacy is important. And actually, it's funny because one, one of the things for me is as, as a, as a, when I was a social worker, I had a lot of power you know, to go into houses, people's houses, intrude on family life. Mm -hmm. but, it, but I was also very conscious of the fact that my powers are very constrained and should be constrained. They should be constrained that only in very specific circumstances can I act and intrude. Not generally. 
And, and I, I haven't mentioned this to you before. The paradox of that, Michelle, is, is my children don't go to school. They're home educated. Yeah. Because I don't want them in the school system. I want them to be able to free to learn whatever yeah. they want to learn and choose to learn. Anyway, so that's why I think privacy is important. Privacy and freedom go hand in hand. Wow. Um, I, I'm just thinking about the all the privacy policy. You know, I mean, besides consumers not reading them, I, I just feel like, you know, are these companies even abiding by what they created, you know? Um, are they even complying with their own privacy policy? Yeah. You know, and, and you know what, what really scares me about privacy and the decentralization decentralization ecosystem today, you know, mm -hmm. is not even incentivization for people to, to be paid for their attention. You know, I'm just afraid of people, leaders using the ethos of decentralization to create something and being animal farm, you know, like, so I think that's why it's kind of important you know, to not just looking at the project, but also looking at the leaders who are creating the project, you know, are they acting, um, you know, like worse than some of the centralized leaders today? Because with, with decentralization and some of the technology, you know, hopefully they're not going to do the same thing with our data tomorrow, right? Yeah, well, and in certain instances, certainly in the case of pirate chain, they're not going to be able to. <laughs> let's talk about the privacy in pirate chain yeah well shall i go through some of the basics of pirate chain so, pe so people who are new to it no one is i want to say i i'm not a member of the team i'm a supporter i've been covering the project for ages i think it's completely great it's a community organization so there's no company uh behind pirate chain you know basically people who want to get involved just get involved at whatever level they want to get involved um it's a proof of work coin it's a fork of, and let me get this correct, right? It's a fork of Zcash. Okay. Which, right? Komodo is a fork of Zcash. And Zcash is a fork of Bitcoin. Okay, got it. And, um, but Pirate Chain is born out of the Komodo project because Komodo used to have these features, ZK Snarks, mm -hmm. which is um, zero knowledge. I can't remember the rest of it. I've been told many, many times. I keep forgetting. I'm not technically minded, by the way. But it's a way of ensuring that the transactions are shielded. So if I send you, only you and I, if you and I do an exchange using ZK Snarks, only you and I know what's being exchanged. Yeah. I'm sending you 10. You know I'm sending you 10. Nobody else knows the transaction yeah. is shielded, right? Yeah. Um, now, with Zcash and with Komodo, there's optional privacy. So not all the transactions are private. So you have a, a date, an anonymous data set and a non-anonymous data set. Awesome. It's possible through a process of elimination to work out which are the um, private transactions. Now, I'll come to that in a second. Let me, so Pirate Chain is a, it's a proof of work coin, mineable, fair release, and um, use the Equihashi uh, algorithm same as Komodo and the other thing that it has it has delayed proof of work which means that every 10 minutes all the transactions on the pirate chain blockchain are hashed onto the Komodo blockchain okay and every 10 minutes all those transactions are hashed onto the Bitcoin blockchain so in order to do a 51% attack on pirate chain you would need 51% of the mining power for pirate chain plus 51% of the mining power for Komodo plus 51% of the mining power for Bitcoin. It just ain't worth it. So it's uh -huh. completely resistant to double spend attacks to 51% attacks. So it's the most secure of all the pri all the privacy coins and it, uh, Mimble Wimble coins, Grin and Beam, they're not 51% attack resistant. Yeah. I think they were just being recently attacked, wasn't it? Like just this week. No, we'll come. I can talk about what happened with that was that somebody's found out there's a vulnerability in the yeah. Mimble protocol, which allows you to work backwards. Yeah. So what Pirate Chain has as an advantage over Monero and Dash and Pivx and Zcash and Zencash is that virtually all the transactions are shielded. There's nothing to see on the, on the blockchain, nothing, no data whatsoever. So, so the, the coin 
is mined and from the rig to the wallet, that's the only transaction you can see. And that's to make sure that the rig, the miners aren't rigging the game and producing more pirate chain than they should. <laughs> but then once it goes into the first wallet, after that, you can't see anything ever, 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 ever. That's awesome. You yeah. You don't know how much is in the wallet. You don't know if any left. You don't know if any, le if any did leave. You don't know how much or where it went to. So there's no data to analyze. It has the largest anonymous anonymity set of any um, cryptocurrency. And, and one of the things that, I, so excuse me, one of the things that happens, Michelle, is that people will post on my comments below, right? Well, what about this coin? And what about that coin? And what about Cloak? And what about Deep Onion? And what about this one? And what about T-Pay? <laughs> Go have a look at the Block Explorer. Compare Block Explorers. There's nothing on the Pirate <laughs> Block Explorer, nothing. And it's 51% attack resistant. So it's the most secure, most private of all the cryptocurrency coins. So that's, 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 that's awesome. Part. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't want financial data to be out there. I think, I think like even with like my either wallet, um, you know, if you give someone a public address, they can kind of stalk you a little bit. And given that most of the security is really done by insider, right? Yeah. You know, and like someone break into your house, you know, like if you call the police, they would tell you. The first question they always ask you is, you know, like, is there any, your friend? <laughs> Do you suspect that, you know, because it's, it's usually a relationship or a friend who's doing it, you know, airline security, same thing, inside of that, it's really big. Um, you know, corporations as well, right? You know, yep. you have your confidential information, you know, of course your employee, right? <laughs> um you know that's the ironic piece of it and and so i think i think having that anonymy with your financial data especially is, is very very important um uh, so do you know the history of how they came up with that idea yes so some of the uh developers in the komodo team were tinkering as mm -hmm. developers do right and and by the way komodo has just got some of the most amazing tech in my opinion from all the projects now of course i don't know all the projects but their tech is just pretty really really solid and they were wondering whether it was possible to create a chain where all the transactions would be shielded mm -hmm. which was something that um no other proof of work cryptocurrency had managed up to that point mm -hmm. so with a little bit of tinkering and they're like yep it's possible it's possible and that's how it it came up they did some more work and released the algorithm and people started mining it. Wow. Let's, let's go to the future a little bit. You know, of mm -hmm. course, we're like the end of 2019. Um, and I think we're still at the beginning of the industry. Um, yeah. I think companies are adopting blockchain more and more. And I think um, there's interplay with cryptocurrency and blockchain. Um, and, you know, even though that people can use blockchain independently, what do you think is the future like in five years or the vision of pirate chain oh. and, and how does that interplay with privacy okay well one is i so i'm not you know officially a member of the team so i'm not yeah. in to the conversation what they're creating but i imagine you know what, what we want is for pirate chain to uh be used more and more and more for mm -hmm. say for things like shopping you know, if I want to purchase something of you, you're providing, like I want to buy a subscription to your premium podcast service. Mm -hmm. And if I'm paying you in Bitcoin, you can check out my address. Yeah. Know how many Bitcoin I have. Or if I go into a shop and I pay with Bitcoin or ETH, they can have a look and say, okay, this customer's got this much. It's like being able to look into my bank account. I don't want... That's kind of scary. I don't want the retailer to look into my bank account, right? No, also, we don't. Yeah, but also, if you're a business, so you're using, you're using Bitcoin to transact in your business, another business, this, this rival podcaster, can have a look at your Bitcoin address and know exactly how much you got going in and out. So, so can, can I stop that and talk yeah. about Libra a little bit? So imagine a hundred companies knowing your public address, 
without privacy and knowing how much Bitcoin and cryptocurrency you have when you purchase something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just a couple of points about that is um, one, the Libra project is slowly dying or the Facebook are coming up with something else themselves. Right. But yeah. I, I suspended my Facebook account. I don't know how many years ago. So it, I was never, Libra was never going to be of interest to me. I'm like, no, I'm no way am I going to go there. You know, I use Brave Browser. I use um, Start Pages as my search engine or DocDocGoGo. So I'm not interested. Now, there are other things. I still use WhatsApp. Yeah, and which is owned by Facebook. That's right. And I still use Google and Google Maps so they know where I'm going. Yeah, but, and they scan your messages, pretty sure. But the, but the, but the idea that, that corporations through Libra or something else would have intimate knowledge of our finance, of my finances, terrible. No, 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 it's no. It's not no. just finances, right? It's, it's your behavior and what you shop and your health data, right? Like Google has like, is working with a hospital now, right? And they have data of a lot of people and their health records. Imagine yeah. that, like, well, they can scan our email. They know our thoughts and who we're dealing with. You know, they have our health data. You know, with Libra, they know, you know, what we're buying. Uh, where we're going because of Uber, you know, all the shops, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's, it's scary, you know, it's, you know, it's 1984 and worse than that, right? Because it's just not watching, it's using AI and other technology to profile us. Yep, yep, absolutely, I agree with you there. And then in, in terms of the vision, you know, I, you know, greater adoption greater adoption of cryptocurrencies everywhere and then people being able to transact with are in order to maintain their privacy and, and maintain their freedom yeah that's um i think that's what we need right or or <laughs> i think that's important i i'd say i mean it's not my place to say that that's what the world needs um but for my opinion it, it just seems like because of you know the the use of technology to watch us it's kind of more important that we try to use technology to kind of deter that as much as possible so that we can have freedom and and true freedom and not just a fake sense of freedom absolutely absolutely back to what we came at the beginning privacy for freedom yeah yeah i mean i mean because when you really think about you know the school system and you know, we're, we're taught to have the same path. And, you know, I'm, I'm more afraid that with everyone watching, we'll act a certain way. We're basically conditioning our youth, you know, and the people after us to be a certain way. And I don't really know how important that is, right? If, for example, if everyone on Instagram really cares about their looks, uh, or everyone on Twitter just wants to be famous, um, you know, how will our future be in the next, you know, five, 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. And is that the society that we yeah. wanted to create? You know, I think we have changed a lot since social media become really big. Um, and of course, with, with that fame and publicity, right? We lost a lot of our rights, um, including privacy. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so how do you think, um, with, with pirate chain, um, how do people, how do consumers or even businesses work with, with work with the, with the chain? Like, how does that work? Okay. There is, there is a way of, you can, if you're a, if you're, if you're a website owner, you can, um, I forget the name, right? You have to look it up on the pirate chain website, okay. which is that you can transact, you can accept payments in R. There's one particular project I want to give a shout out to physicalcryptocoins.com. They actually sell uh, physical coins. They're not the real coins and yeah. they're not valuable. It's just like a, a souvenir sort of thing. Yeah. I have a, I have a bunch here actually. Oh, you do? Okay. Good for you. Yeah, I collect them from, from <laughs> yeah. projects just for fun. Okay, so they, they have a, um, an API, uh, there's an API that they're able to accept R as a payment. Okay. So that, that's available. There's, there's other um, websites and services that can accept R as a payment. And there's more and more stuff like that being built 
as part of the ecosystem for pirate chain. Yeah, that's um, that's awesome. And do they have any? I guess they do have a lot of competitor, right? Like Zcash and. Uh... No, no, there's nobody that comes <laughs> close. Yes, there it's like saying. In my opinion, by the way, it's like saying Bitcoin. Bitcoin has a lot of competitors. No, <laughs> nothing that comes close to Bitcoin. Okay. <laughs> now there are some other coins. I'm mean, using Bitcoin as an example. There's some other coins that are really, really great, like Litecoin and Digibyte. You know, they all have their qualities and stuff, but they don't come close to Bitcoin for what Bitcoin provides. They have different utilities, but the main ones, I think, the the Monero. Monero isn't as private as, um, as Pirate Chain. Pirate Chain's way more private. Okay. And also, uh, Mimblewimble doesn't have any data on the blockchain, but isn't proof of work, isn't secure from 51% attacks. And they've discovered a vulnerability recently in the Mimblewimble protocol, which means that you can work out the transactions. Yeah, yeah, I read that article. <laughs> so there isn't a lot. There isn't much in the way of competition. I mean, the challenge for, for the Pirate Chain team, in, and including myself, right, because is getting the word out about Pirate Chain, people learning about Pirate Chain, being willing to try it out, delve into it, do their own research. So I really like the Pirate Chain community on Telegram. Um, mm -hmm. I just feel like it's very authentic and people are really passionate about privacy. Um, because every time I go there, you know, besides like air, <laughs> like all the A R R R that I write, you know, of course, you know, I, I read the conversations between the contributors and it's a really awesome community. It's mm -hmm. very authentic. You know, there's not a lot of bots. Right. And yeah. I was there at the beginning and I saw how the community grew as well. So yes. it's awesome. Yes. Yes. No, I've been there from pretty much early on or something. I'm, I'm actually one of the admins. I'm a terrible admin because I, I, <laughs> I only pop in occasionally. And um, one of the things I think about Pirate Chain and also about other, other projects that I've been in, if the project is moving mm -hmm. and going in the right direction, there isn't nastiness in the Telegram group. Yeah. You know, because the, the project is just delivering and letting people know. And if there are setbacks, they let people know. Yeah. I, I like that transparency, you know, um, because, you know, I'm, I'm in some projects, you know, I'll get deleted or, or not deleted bans immediately, even if I ask a question that they don't like, you know, no. like, like in this community where we're building the future, you know, and we're supposed to be incentivizing user and giving the power back to us, you know, the people. Um, you know, but sometimes when you say something that the, the team don't like because they find it critical or negative because they're mon monitoring their perception, right? They delete you immediately, you know, and uh, that's pretty wrong, right? I mean, it, it's just really against the ethos, but these projects do anyways to, to protect themselves, I guess, you know, um, and so it's, it's kind of fake, right? But with Pirate Chain, I think, you know, I love that. That's why I mentioned authenticity, right? Um, and, you know, that transparency, I think it's, it's really important. Of course, different projects make mistakes, you know, and, and I think it's okay. Um, however, you know, if you're just basically banning people and deleting people just because they ask something that you don't like, or just because, you know, like, something else then i think that's terrible yep yep but thankfully that doesn't go on in the pirate chain telegram group yeah yeah i'm i'm, I'm really excited about that I, I think that's very memorable you know i i, I still remember because i was just um in the in the group like early on as well <laughs> um one of my friends told me about it and also on on the on twitter you know, when, when someone says that they're buying something that's not on the exchange or purchasing a token that's not on the exchange, I know exactly what it is for some reason. Very good, very good. What else, Michelle? Um, I wanted to ask you about, um, so we, we talk a little bit about community. Um, we talk about the birth of the idea and mm -hmm. privacy and why it's important and you know, why there's freedom. 
to to privacy. Let's talk about collaboration because I think collaboration is very different from community. Um, mm -hmm. Community is really us, you know, belonging to a group. Collaboration is us working together um, to move something forward. What are some of the things that you think we could collaborate on in terms of privacy? I mean, private chain um, specifically and also uh, privacy in general with within the community or even within you know human beings as people right well i think um is one of the ways is the sharing of information the sharing of information with regards to privacy so for example you know uh, using a password manager or using using a really great hardware wallet using a vpn you know uh, i use nordvpn by the way um mm -hmm. And uh, for those watching on my channel, there's a link in the description below, but that's really important for your privacy and also your safety and your security. And then exchanging ideas. You know, I, I've met CEOs of other, of other projects that deal with data, that deal with privacy, and I've learned off them. So then it's become incumbent upon me to pass that information on to others. Now, I'm so just think thinking, is there like a privacy group on Telegram that we can create that could talk about privacy in, in particular? Not that I, not that I know of. There may we should, be. We should do that. I think maybe that would be cool. You maybe you could start one. But something happened. Like I, um, there was a tweet a few days ago about YouTube changing their guidelines and that they're going to delete channels that aren't commercially viable. And what that mean, what it allows them to do, is demonetize channels for whatever reason because the guidelines are so vague and there's no real appeal, demonetize the channel. And then later on down the line, they can then say, oh, your channel's not commercially viable. We're gonna de-platform you. You know, I'm on Twitter and, you know, the, the most inter interesting about my, my, uh, my Instagram channel is Crypto Michelle, right? Yeah. Um, and I basically post photos of, you know, conferences, literally. And, you know, I've been to the United Nation, I've been to IMF, you know, but yet when someone wants to add me, it basically, you know, give them a warning about the content. Wow. <laughs> and wow. I was just like, what kind of content do I have, you know, that is questionable? Is it my photographs that I attend with my friend, you know, that I attend and take taken with my friends? Or, you know, is it like the photo of me at United Nations or IMF or at some other conferences talking about, you know, blockchain or even AI? I mean, it's just so wrong, right? And, and I think about that. I mean, YouTube in particular, there are more reasons and reasons of, you know, picking and choosing what they want. You yep. know what I mean? Like, and, and there's really something not right about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And can I just say, uh, Michelle, what I was going to say is that I wanted to post that tweet on the Telegram group and I checked with one of the admins, other the, uh, one of the other admins, because I don't want to break the rule, even though I'm an admin of, tel of the Pirate Chain group, I, wanna, I don't want to take advantage of that and I don't want to break the rules by talking about something that isn't, you know, um, part of that conversation. So I checked with one of the admins, can I post this? And the admin said, sure, because it's about censorship. And privacy is the you know is about the antithesis of censorship. Yeah, because censorship kills freedom, and privacy sets us free. Yeah. 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 I mean, I I I saw also that on YouTube there's a it is more uh, COPA compliance. You know, children and and uh, of course children privacy is very important. Um, and I'm working a lot on. Um, you know, uh, the California Privacy Protection Act and GDPR. And, you know, I think with children under 16 um, needs to opt in and, and, you know, there's a, a number of regulations around that. And it, it seems like the laws are recognizing uh, privacy as an inalienable right, um, mm -hmm. you know, in, in terms of California and other states. However, I don't really see big companies like, you know, uh, Instagram and YouTube. <laughs> I see more restrictions, I guess, I guess, from them, while, you know, the state is trying to protect more of the rights of our, our the consumers. Yeah, and then we don't know what's going on in the background. 
Correct, to- correct. I mean, they're, they're also a data broker itch company that is selling data about us. Um, okay. So if you go to Axiom, you know, I used to, I used to actually app out uh, every year uh, from these websites because they basically aggregate data about you and they sell them. Uh, to different companies. So, you know, that's something that I would recommend as well is just go to Axiom. You know, um, I, I went as far as notarizing a letter, you know, um, and sending that notarized letter to these <laughs> to these like d- data brokerage company and opting out every year, um, you know, because like people can buy your social security number, right? And you know, just with a few dollars, and it's just really scary. And to parallel to parallel that with with blockchain and cryptocurrency, like really, do you really want people to know how much you have, like you said, and yeah. what you bought with it? You know, it, it's just quite, it's kind of like having your social security number. You know, it's tractable. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm with you on that one. Is there anything else that we've discussed that, you know, um, that we haven't discussed that you would like to talk about? No, I, th- I think people should, people should go check out Pirate Chain. And if you think, one is if you don't think privacy is important, I'd invite you to reconsider that point of view. <laughs> don't send me your email address and your password. Just really think about that one, right? Privacy is increasingly important, especially because there's a movement where governments and corporations are getting more and more repressive, uh, you know, in, in terms of suppressing the resistance, like in Spain, in France, in Hong Kong, in Bolivia, in Iran, in Chile, and in more places to come. So, um, I think privacy is really important and I would invite people to join the Telegram group or the Discord channel for Pirate Chain, check it out, ask questions. And then if you think it's worth your while, you know, maybe put a little bit into Pirate Chain. This is not investment advice and you got to check it out for yourself. That's what I'm saying. Sorry, the Pirate Channel is, uh, is it P-I- T.me t. slash Pirate Chain. That's yeah. the Telegram. Okay. And the website is pirate.black. B-L-A-C-K. Pirate.black. Okay, awesome. Got it. There's an official group. Yeah. And um, then, of course, subscribe to your podcast and subscribe to my channel and come and meet us both in the Telegram group for Pirate Chain. Yep. And I have one last question. Um, yeah. I'd like to ask um, advice. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, from each person who speak uh, on Loud Talk Radio, because I think it's just really about giving back to the community. Um, and it could be anything. It could be about, you know, life in general, <laughs> piracy, you know, uh, pirate chain, or, you know, YouTube channel, right? Um, what is that one advice that you would love uh, for people in this community to learn? Um, with regards to privacy or life in general? Just anything you want. Oh. You're like, there's just so many. <laughs> I worked as a social worker. I've also been doing pro bono work for 25 years in terms of personal development training and coaching for people. There's one thing, I suppose, which is not related to um, cryptocurrencies, but it's related to human beings, Michelle, which is the importance of gratitude. And it's a particular trick to expressing gratitude. So for example, we could do a little exercise, right? So for example, I could every day express gratitude for my wife and children. I'm grateful for my wife and children. I'm grateful for my wife and children. What happens though, is I become habituated and it's no longer fresh for me. The trick is, every, so try this, every, 20, every day express gratitude for one or two, three things that have happened in the last 24 hours and something that you're looking forward to in the next 24 hours. So okay, that's let's, let's do, something new. Let's do this right now. Okay. okay. What are three things that you're grateful for in the last 12 hours? Okay, so in the last 12 hours. So before I started recording this video, my son's 15. He's taller than me. And I'm really grateful that we had this wrestle. And, uh, you know, he, he can give it to me, but he's still ticklish. My son is still ticklish. So I'm grateful for the opportunity I had of... <laughs> tickling him as we wrestle today. 
I'm grateful for that. Um, I'm, I'm grateful for this conversation that you reached out to me and that this is going out on your podcast and going out on my channel. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that my video, the, the two videos that I posted on BitTubers today have done really, really well in terms of views. I, I think one of my videos got the highest views it's ever had. And I'm grateful that the video, my videos on BitTubers are getting more views than my videos on YouTube. Yay, that's awesome. <laughs> Even though my, my YouTube subscriber base is much, much larger. And in terms of what I'm looking forward to, uh, I've had a headache for about three weeks, a low grade headache. And uh, the other day my wife, I told my wife, she said, that's it, you're going to the doctor. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to go have blood tests. I mean, I'm pretty good, I, I don't, it's, it's still there, but it doesn't stop me or anything, right? And I'm grateful for the National Health Service. That's awesome. I'm gonna go see a nurse, I'm gonna go see a nurse. they're gonna take my blood, check it all out, and it's gonna cost me nothing because I've already paid in my through my tax. <laughs> So here's what I'm grateful for. Yeah. So, Ooh, yes. yeah. so, so basically I, uh, I got this from a friend um, at San Francisco Blockchain Week, which is a couple of weeks ago. I drove him home, but he lives in a, in a hotel that is like the top, like on California. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was really high, right? So I drove him home, but a block away from his hotel, because it was like we went to a few parties after San Francisco Blockchain Week, and I was kind of scared <laughs> driving up the hill. So I was just like, okay, I'm gonna stop here and uh, <laughs> and let you walk back home, right? Because I'm afraid of heights. Like I'm really afraid of heights. So yesterday I went to uh, like a a meetup. And, uh, and I was really grateful that I get to, you know, go there because I've been traveling so much that I haven't been to that meetup for a while, you know, mm -hmm. so, and, and it's kind of nice to be catching up uh, with some of the things I used to do before I travel. I speak a lot on blockchain all over the world and, uh, you know, which is fun, you know, yet it's just basically take time from a lot of things that I used to do. And so I went to this meetup yesterday and, and I was really grateful for that. And then uh, I was like, oh, I need to pick up my ledger because my friend left me there. And I actually drove all the way up the hill and stopped there and parked there and walked to the hotel just to get this. So it's really about overcoming your fear of heights, I guess. So I was able to actually go, go up that hill and, uh, you know, pick up the ledger. And so my friends are like teasing me because without the ledger, I would not overcome my fear, right? Um, so I'm really grateful for that, you know? Um, it, it's always scary. I mean, I've been working for a few years now. I always try to do things that scare me. And I've been to like uh, Costa Rica and do the zip lining. You know, I've done like, I've been to New Zealand and did uh, black water rafting, basically jumping backwards down waterfall, you know, mm -hmm. just to work on my fear of heights, you know, but it's still kind of continuing, right? So I'm kind of grateful that I did that. And like the third thing is really grateful for talking to you, of course, you know, I love privacy. I'm very conscious of privacy. You know, um, I was working on privacy at some of the big corporation. And so, you know, that is one of the topics that is really important to me personally. And I'm really, really grateful that Pirate Chain is allowing or enabling technology that secure our transaction. Because I think that's very important. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. I, I, and I hope to see more of that, right? In other, t in, you know, for other things. I mean, if we can use the Pirate uh, protocol and, and the chain, you know, and allowing more of not just financial data, right, but also other data, um, that would be awesome. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Michelle. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I will catch up later. Yes, and then what I say to finish up is that, you know, you'll have whatever links you have, however you have them for your podcast and everything, and also, I'll have the links to your, um, to Laptop Radio underneath my videos and I invite people to subscribe and comment and like both everywhere. And that's it.
Thank yeah, you that so sounds that sounds awesome. You know, it's it's an awesome collaboration, and uh, you know, thank you again for joining um, this. And uh, everyone could watch it at uh, as, as soon um, or listen to it on the radio live, um, yeah. and uh, we'll all also archive it on the on the podcast as well. Um, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Michelle. All the best. Bye bye. Bye bye.